I am getting hammered. Oh my gosh. Welcome to the Florida Trail. I am out here doing a 56 mile section from Rodman Dam Trailhead down to Alexander Springs. I have three nights, three and a half days to get that done. And I just got dropped off a few moments ago by my shuttle. And earlier today, I came from the Suwannee River section up in Northern Florida. And I was there for three days, well, two and a half days, backpacking a 45 mile section of the Suwannee River. If you are interested in that section, I will put the link to that video down in the description. Well, we have a storm moving in here in about three hours. So I'm gonna try to get down this trail about 10 miles and get some of it knocked out before setting up camp. Thanks for coming along. The Florida Trail crosses some ATV trails in this area. That is some powdery sand. Makes me think of the sand dunes in Michigan. Pretty nice stuff. So I've never really backpacked and hiked in Florida other than some day hikes and trail running while on vacation in Florida with my boys. So this is something totally new to me, but at the same time, I kind of know what to expect. It's flat, it's sandy, and certain sections have a lot of pine duff. So it's not like I'm hiking in a totally bizarre environment or a unfamiliar environment but it is definitely different than hiking in ohio kentucky michigan pennsylvania because they have lots of snow and ice the forecast is calling for 100 percent chance of rain at 6 p.m tonight and most of the day tomorrow so it's probably going to be very wet trail conditions all day tomorrow but then we have a sunny day after that so hopefully we can put down some hard miles on that day and crank out this Ocala National Forest. Well, so far it's a totally different feel down here in Ocala compared to the Suwannee River section. I mean, I'm gonna turn this around and let you take a look at this. It's so, well, it's either enclosed with shrubs all around you and it's just a little walking path or it opens up into this huge vast area where Hopefully, I'll get to see a bear eventually, but look at this. Man, that's pretty. The only problem so far is hearing all the ATVs. There's trails around me, and they're very noisy. Hopefully, that will disappear tonight where I set up camp. Man, this looks like bear territory. It's gotta be one out there somewhere. This is so pretty. I was afraid it was gonna be really boring, but I'm pleasantly surprised that it's uh, more scenic than I thought it would be. I'm not sure what these bushes are, but they remind me of mountain laurel. Thick and impenetrable. Man, I'm really enjoying this trail. I can see how it could possibly get monotonous after a while, but I just love these big open views. I mean, you can see hundreds of yards. I may have a little water situation here soon. I still got 23 ounces in one of those in this smart water bottle here. That's all I got left. In about a half mile, there's a little possible sinkhole I'm betting it's gonna be dry and after that it's another seven miles from where I'm at right now to um, a little pond campsite and I was reading the comments in gut hook and it looks like that this little pond that I might be camping at tonight is often just a mud hole that ATVs are doing donuts in and if there is water in it it's very very difficult to access it because of the muddy banks but that's like my only option i'm gonna run out of water so hopefully there's water there 
And that means if it starts raining before six o'clock, I'm gonna have to hike through the rain because I have to make it to this water source. I mean, I can't make it through the night unless I stopped right now. So, it's got me a little bit worried. I'm just gonna keep trucking on at three and a half mile an hour and we'll get there by six and hopefully there's water. Would you look at this? It's like I just entered another world. These giant oak hammocks. And somewhere around here, there's supposed to be a sinkhole with water in it. Right in these oak trees. <sighs> I'm not seeing anything. Maybe it's on down a little further. So this is the sinkhole. Hey, maybe there is some water there. Oh my goodness. Hmm. <laughs> Yuck. I don't imagine... I don't imagine that is a, uh, oh my, yeah. If I was out, I might consider filtering that. But since I still have 23 ounces untouched, I'm gonna take my chances, because that looks disgusting. Looks like I got at least seven more miles. Hopefully there's water at the next spot. Yep, this is how the day ended. I've been getting pounded by rain for the last 45 minutes. Nightfall is setting in but I am nice and dry. I am getting a little bit of splash up on the edges of my duplex just because I, in my haste of setting up, I did not raise the bathtub floor high enough. So I'm getting a little bit of splash up coming inside. And crisis averted on the water situation. Even though I'm here at a little pond, I'm in a little campground I just happened to stumble upon. It's closed, but I was, I was gonna take the chance, the risk of setting up, just because I needed to get out of the rain. There's a pond right over here. I try to go down and get water there, but it's a big swampy mess, and you can't get to it without wading into water and mud. So here's the next best thing. Oh, I got another cup full. That's my second cup pot that I have filled up from the tent runoff. It's got a little dirt in it, but at least I got water. It's a flood underneath my tent, just like when I went to the Adirondacks. I'll try to show you here. All that water out there is, I'm on a hill. I didn't choose wisely where to set up. So all this water out there is going directly underneath my bathtub of my duplex. I'm on a water bed. Thank goodness there's no pinholes in it. And I'm getting a lot of splash. A lot of splash up on the screen. You can see the edge of my air pad is getting damp. Everything along the edges is getting damp. But the good news is I'm not out of water anymore. Two full jugs there. The third one, third pot full down there. So I'm going to fill my Sawyer bag. Well, good morning from some random campground along the Florida Trail in Ocala National Forest. I did read on Gut Hook that you are not supposed to camp here without paying the $6. However, when I was using the latrine right up there last night, right before it started raining, there's a sign in there that says all facilities are closed. So you can't pay to stay here if you wanted to. And I also read that a few weeks ago, someone stayed here and was kicked out by a ranger and just given a warning because normally they issue a $150 fine. It was starting to pour. I could have set up on the other side of the fence, I guess, out in the woods. but uh, And that would have been better because I had a river of water with all this mulch and leaves and grit flowing down under my tent and trying to come inside my tent. So it was not fun. Everything is damp and humid and sticky this morning. <laughs> One of the worst experiences packing up camp I think I've ever had. But you know, you gotta embrace the suck when you're not doing something like this. You're always gonna experience some crappy weather on the trail. My breakfast is just about rehydrated. I'm all packed up, ready to hit the trail, 8 a.m. At least 25 miles today, 30 if we can get there before dark. Depends how much time I stay at the 88 store. That's a little restaurant diner uh, just two or three miles down the trail.
on the go breakfast today. By the time I would have sat down and ate this at the picnic table, I could have been a mile and a half down the trail. Always wanting to make forward progress. And look who decided to come out and join us today. Holy moly, can you believe it? Fourth day on the trail and finally see full sunshine. But I can tell it's gonna be blistering hot today. I think it's supposed to get in the low 70s. I'm sweating already. You know, one thing that's pretty cool about this trail is you'll be coming out of almost like a green tunnel of these uh, small bushy trees. And then you turn around and all of a sudden you're in this big open vast area of pine trees. And the trail is just absolutely perfect the entire way. And my feet are staying dry too. Looks like we're getting ready to cross County Road 316. Well, I made it to the 88 store and they're closed. I have my heart set on a hamburger, maybe even a coffee because I missed my morning coffee today. Oh yeah, free but, coffee here. Yeah, free coffee. Wow. Yeah, at 11. I ran into a fella through hiking the Florida Trail. This is Mountain House. Hi. How's it going, Mountain House? Good. And when did you start the Florida Trail? January 7th in Big Cypress. Okay. That was pretty swampy down there, I bet. Yeah, it was water for almost 30 miles. Wow. No timeline. I'm just doing whatever I do. You going to watch the Super Bowl today? I am, right here. They're going to have a TV out front. Hey, Mountain House. It was good to meet you. Nice you too. To you. Have a great hike on the Florida Trail. For sure. Man, I was so upset to find out that the 88 store was closed. I was counting on that to be one of my lunches on this section of trail. I mean, I'm not gonna run out of food. I still have enough food, but now I gotta stop and cook. <laughs> oh well. Yeah, I was craving a hamburger, even though it's only 10 o'clock, 10.30 in the morning. I was craving a hamburger and coleslaw for some reason. And I skipped my morning coffee this morning because I didn't have enough water. So I was planning on getting a cup of coffee there and I found out the coffee was free. Man, they opened at 11 o'clock. I was one hour too early. And I can't stick around. I don't need it that bad. I'm kind of on a time crunch since I got a flight back to Ohio in two days. So got to keep pushing forward. It sure is nice to see that clear blue sky. But with it comes sunshine. And I like sunshine, but it is getting hot and humid. And I don't particularly like hiking in hot, humid weather. I mean, I'll take this over single digits that we're having back in Ohio right now, but this is the kind of weather I want to go kayak camping in. We're not going to be in uh, forest looking stuff like this much longer. Actually, about a half mile back, there's a lot of scrubby wasteland looking stuff. And now we're entering some more beautiful pines. But that's all going to end soon because we're getting ready to enter the Hopkins Prairie Wilderness. I believe that's what it's called. Oh, probably four or five miles away. Just got done taking a nice needed break on this comfortable death bench where I thought about laying down and dying. I'm hurting. Man, I don't know how in the world I ever did FKTs. I don't ever want to do one again. I'm only 65 miles in and three and a half. This is the fourth day. I'm beat. I got six more miles to uh, Prairie Springs, Hopkins, Hopkins Prairie Campground or something like that. But right now I'm currently at the uh, Salt Springs turnoff. And mostly sunny skies, but just enough cloud cover to not make it too hot and uncomfortable. Boy, it is hot. 75 degrees, mostly sunny. Well, let me show you the water source I had to just use because I'm getting low on water. That's the main thing I don't like about the Florida Trail. It seems like there should be creeks and waterfalls and things everywhere, um, but it's just bone dry everywhere. And this is the source. I'm going to turn the camera around and show you. It's pretty nasty. I did get one bottle here just to make sure I can make it the next six miles to the campground. There she is. Last month this was bone dry. It might have been bone dry last night for all I know. We got some pretty good rain last night, so it must have filled it back up. But on Gut Hook, um, everybody was saying this was dry last month. 
kind of gross. I am getting ready to enter Hopkins Prairie. This is called Hopkins Prairie North, so it must be the north side of it. A little different looking out here. It's going to be hot out here. Definitely needs more water. Oh, there's some water I might be able to get to easier. Heck yeah. Looks like a lot easier access right there. Some nice lily pads in there. Not the greatest source of water, but we're going to have to make do. Try to get the bottle below the green slime. <sighs> Smells like a swamp. Got some mossy floaties in there. Ugh. Gosh, I don't know. So the camera won't pick this issue up that I'm dealing with right now, but there are hundreds of ladybugs swarming about. They keep landing on me and driving me nuts. I'll be glad when I get out of this open prairie area and back in the woods. I don't know what the deal is. Maybe it's because it's been so cold and now it is finally normal, like almost mid seventies, it's bringing them out or something. Crazy. All right, I'm just, leaving the prairie area came from back there and i read about this on gut hook a little nice hammock option here right in these little pines the little campsite there that's pretty nice oh i'm not staying here but i think i'm gonna take advantage of this seat and take a little break maybe cook a little lunch I'm getting hungry. It's almost two o'clock. It's pretty, but it's hot out here. That is the biggest orange blaze I've ever seen. Another lovely water source. I need water, but I don't know if I need it that bad. At the last pond, I tried to get some and it was just full of nasty particulates. Let's go down here and take a look at this, see if it's any better. If I can get a deep dunk. Nah. Freaking frogs and slime. Ugh, nasty. Oh, man, it's pretty through here. It's nice when you go through these little shaded spots. I just finished enjoying some Thai curry by Good To Go while I was walking down the trail. It's pretty good stuff, one of my favorites of theirs. So I got a pretty good headache going on right now and I'm pretty sure it's dehydration. You know, I had to kind of limit my water use yesterday coming into the nightfall where I set up camp because there wasn't any water, it was a dry camp. And then all day today, there's been very few water sources. So I've kind of been holding on to my water and it's causing me to feel achy and headachey. So I'm pretty sure that's what it is. I'll be glad when we get to the campground and I can get my fill of water. Probably three more miles. You can see here that this prairie is just one great big marsh, especially after a good rain like yesterday. It's a lot of water sitting out in the middle of it. And I've been walking for probably a mile since I last turned this camera on, and I swear the forest is still another mile away. <laughs> this is going on forever. Well, I have arrived to the campground entrance. It's right here behind me. Getting ready to walk over there and hopefully they have a campsite for me. And this is a bat house. Check it out. I can hear them squeaking up in there. You can smell them too. Whew. There's the guano. That must be what I'm smelling. This fruit paste is delicious. It's made from guano. Guano! Bat droppings. Yummy! You can look up in there, there's slats. The bats are living up in those slats of plywood, it looks like. Interesting. All right, I made it to the campground. Got me some water from the weird 
turning handle pump. I've never seen one like that before. And here's the bathrooms and the camper host is up here on the left somewhere. There was four campsites left. Well, he told me there was only three campsites left, but I found a fourth one. The only problem is it has a camper 50 yards from it and I saw a generator behind it. So I'm worried that they're gonna be running the generator. They're not here right now, so I can't ask them. Uh, this is the site. I think I'm gonna take this one. The other site that was available was about 100 yards that way by the bathrooms. But this is way closer to the water. The water's right there. All right, let's do it. Well, I got a site chosen and everything is set up. Still got a few things drying. But uh, here's my duplex with the Nemo tensor inside. And the Nemo fellow pillow. I had it on the picnic table drying for like a half hour before I set it up. Just pulled my quilt out, my UGQ 20 degree bandit. Had a couple damp spots on it. It'll be dried out in no time. And now it's time for some supper while I enjoy this beautiful view with prairie, Hopkins Prairie on both sides of me. Pretty nice. It's tempting to go out in there and swim and clean up. Just gotta watch out for the gators. This place is overrun by squirrels. I mean, I've seen 50 of them already. I got, I got five right in front of me right now climbing up this tree. All right, let's go take a little walk around this loop and see what the sunset's gonna look like tonight. Looks like it's gonna be pretty amazing. Wow. Very nice. That's a lovely little campground. I love these uh, trees with the moss hanging off of them. That's sweet. All right, I think it's time to get some supper started. All right, so the guy camping next to me told me to keep an eye out on the bat house because right at sunset, bats will be uh, streaming out of that bat house. There it is. We'll keep an eye on it, and maybe we'll get lucky and see all those bats come swarming out of that bat house. The sun is going down right now, so it shouldn't be long. I'm not seeing any bats yet. And it's gonna to be too dark here in a little bit to see them, probably. Oh well. If they come out, I'll film it. Tonight on the menu is Backpacker's Pantry, Chicken Cashew Curry with Rice. I've n never really bought these before, but as you can see, I only paid $1.99. We have this discount store for a lot of expired stuff in our hometown. I don't see how those are going to go bad, but man, for buck ninety nine, I'll try it. So my neighbors in the camper actually packed up and left tonight so I don't have to worry about any generator noise. And as I was walking by from the water hydrant, they offered me their firewood. So not only am I gonna have a quiet camp tonight, I got a little fire going here. My very first fire on the Florida Trail. It's kind of nice. Quite a bit different than last night. Trying to survive through a thunderstorm. That was miserable. This is very pleasant. Good morning. Day five on the Florida Trail. I'm walking through this gnarly section with all these low lying branches. This is cool. I'm gonna have to actually duck for these right here. It's 7.30 a.m. and I'm feeling really good today. I only have 29 miles to finish the entire section down to Alexander Springs that I'm doing, but I don't need to go that far. I have one more night in the trail, so I'm shooting for a campground by some lake. I'll get back with you later on that. I can't remember the name of it, but I think it's uh, 
oh, I don't know, close to 20 miles away. I slept really well last night until about 1 a.m. when the neighbor camper beside me, a 75 year old man, was snoring half the night and it woke me up and I had to put the earplugs in. I felt like I was right back on a kayak trip with the Colonel trying to get through the night with snoring. Unbelievable. So I was just thinking about something while I was walking here about all of the social media and navigation devices that I am running, posting, and keeping a close eye on continually during this hike. It's almost too much, you know, but I chose to do it that way. But uh, I'm, you know, I've been Marco Poloing with one of my buddies, the Colonel. I've been texting with my wife. I've been posting on Facebook, posting on Instagram, starting and stopping Strava, starting and stopping Gaia and the Garmin. There's probably something else. Oh, and I'm filming with the camera I'm carrying right now. I mean, that's like almost nine or 10 things. That's a lot of devices, a lot of things to keep track of. Man, but it's not taken away from my hike at all. It makes me actually enjoy it more because I'm forced to stop and take a thoughtful or meaningful picture or video. So some people might say, oh, turn all that crap off and just enjoy nature. Well, yeah, there's, there's definitely some truth to that. But also for me personally, I'm probably enjoying it more by being forced to stop to film and photograph. So... I think I'm going to keep on doing it. It's really fun for me. I just entered Juniper Springs Wilderness Area. It's a little over 14,000 acres of wilderness. I don't know what to expect, but I'm sure it's going to be pretty. I know you probably can't tell through the camera, but this is the biggest downhill in Ocala so far. <laughs> that downhill mounted to about 30 feet, maybe 40, so not much. A lot of uh, signs of past fire damage. You can see it in that big tree there. Alrighty, onward. I think I just found my first signs of bear scat right on the trail, but no fresh footprints. So that obviously means it took place before the rain two days ago. I was just thinking about the difference between Ocala National Forest and Suwannee. And when I complete the trail, I'll be able to give you a better uh, comparison. But from right now, from the part I've experienced in the northern half of Ocala, with its lack of water and lack of good water, I gotta go with the Suwannee section. It was uh, a little more rolling hills and I think a little prettier overall. And of course, you got the beautiful Suwannee River you're walking by a majority of the time. Ocala has a beautiful, those big, beautiful open pine tree areas in the north third. But, uh, you know, they're both different and very nice in their own unique way. But uh, upon completion of this trail, I'll let you know my final thoughts on those two sections if you're thinking about trying to choose one over the other. Well, I saw my first deer and a nice sized buck and big doe just ran that way, but I couldn't get my camera out in time. Been walking by several little sinkhole ponds like this one. There are so many awesome places to camp. The problem is there's no water sources. I mean, right in there in those pines, perfect place for hammocks and tents. And I see stuff like this all the time, but there's just no water. And if there is, it's like a little sludgy, slimy pond that's half dried up and would probably plug up your filter. <laughs> you know, knowing what I know now about the water sources here in Ocala National Forest, I should have brought in bigger water bottles or at least a third one. Yeah, I could be putting water in my Sawyer bag. So that's kind of my own fault for being dehydrated yesterday, but I didn't realize how scarce water would be out here. I just assumed that uh, every one of these little ponds and sinkholes that I pass would be suitable water sources, but most of them aren't, unless you want to 
scoop up slime or get your feet wet trying to get to it. So Suwannee section, there's creeks everywhere. Well, not everywhere, several. And of course you got the river a majority of the time that you can get water from. Not so in Ocala. <laughs> so definitely learned my lesson about being a little more prepared or thinking ahead on what water sources are available because you know, I was, I was hurting yesterday a little bit from dehydration. It's been some pretty tough walking here the last quarter mile. It's almost like walking on the beach right here. And you know how that is. It really takes more energy with every step. It's pretty soft sand too. Check out this view and possible camping area right over there. This is Hidden Pond. Looks like there's a trail that goes all the way around it. And I don't know which way is the trail. Yeah, it'd be kind of tough to camp here just because of the slope. But obviously people have at least started fires. Look at that. Right out there, I don't know if you can see that on camera, right there has a nice sandy bottom. You could actually go out here and swim. Oh, that's beautiful. If I was staying here, I would definitely be taking a bath. Here's another one of those amazing campsites, but with no water source. Man, it's pretty. Surrounded by pine trees and palmettos. That'd be a good hang in there. But it'd be a dry one. Well, what do you know? The first little stream I have seen in Ocala National Forest. Well, that should be enough to get me to Juniper Springs. So I just ran into a through hiker going Nobo. This is... Roswell. How's it going, Roswell? Oh, it's going well, man. It's going well. So you are on quite the journey. Yeah, definitely quite the journey. Uh, starting from Key West and then going up to Alabama. Uh, so just chucking uh, a section of the ECT. And then I'll pick up the uh, Alabama to Springer and then Katahdin to the International AT uh, probably this summer. That is amazing. And you're a triple crowner. Yeah, triple crowner. Uh, also done a couple Caminos, done a cross country bike trip, uh, New England Trail, a couple other trails. Some my other gosh. Ones. Yeah. You must have started all this in your teens. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was in my early 20s, actually, yeah. Wow. That's Not pretty impressive. Early. Yeah. Well, it was really great meeting you. And you too, man. I'm sure you're going to run into smiles up the trail here somewhere, maybe bef around Osceola National Forest. And I know Second Chance Hiker's right behind you. Yeah, that'll be. I don't know if he's going to catch you, though. Yeah, maybe, maybe not. I might. I may take some time here uh, in a couple of days. I haven't taken a zero yet, so there you go. I might do that. Yeah, it's been nice meeting you too, man. Yeah. Like, there's not a lot of hikers out this year, so there's it's not. Nice to talk it's to been you. great weather. Other than that storm two days ago, the weather has been yeah. fabulous. <laughs> Other than being cold too. Yeah. yeah, it was a little chilly, but that storm, man, I slept like a baby. Just yeah, a little rain pattern on the <laughs> tent. It's lovely. Nice. Awesome. Well, hey, have a great hike, and thank you. you hope too. you have a good success on your trip up north. Yeah, thank you so much, man. Well, that was pretty cool running into a through hiker going Nobo. His name was Roswell. And I think his trail name could also be the real deal. That guy has put down some miles over the years. Wow, very impressive. This area right here caught my eye. I love those tall skinny pines. Perfect place to hang a hammock. Haven't seen a whole lot of that in the juniper wilderness area. I have arrived at Juniper Springs. Just up here ahead, past the pay booth to the right, will be my rental car at Brian's place, the guy who gave me the shuttle. Let's go check out the spring. Here it is. Man, that's spectacular. Wow. Look at that. Check out that paddle wheel. It's 
So here's the back side of the spring. It's right on the other side of the water wheel. In the water wheel house, whatever you call that. Releasing that much water into this crystal clear, pristine creek. Check out this old stone bridge. Man, it's closed off because it's falling apart, but that is something. Boy. So here's a look at Juniper Springs from the front side. Man, that's gorgeous. I'm thinking about going in for a swim. What the heck? Juniper Springs was pretty awesome. So glad I took a few minutes to walk around and soak in the sights and wash up in the water a little bit. I decided not to take a swim. I'm gonna save that for the end of my trip at Alexander Springs. So what I'm doing now is moving my car down to Alexander Springs where I will be finishing my hike and my shuttle driver is gonna bring me back to Juniper Springs and I'll jump back on the trail right where I left off. I have 18 miles left, probably do half of it today, this afternoon, and the other half tomorrow morning, and we'll be finishing up at Alexander Springs, and I've seen some pretty cool videos of people swimming there, so if time allows, I'll definitely take a swim in Alexander Springs, or at least take advantage of their hot showers before heading home to Ohio. Well, an hour and 45 minutes later, I am back to where I came off the trail here at Juniper Springs. Get back on the trail right this moment. And it shouldn't have taken that long. What happened was we were, after dropping off my car at Alexander Springs, we were three-fourths of the way back here to Juniper Springs, and I realized I left my camera on the car seat. I was so upset with myself. So that added about 40 minutes, well, at least a half hour of driving, if not 40 minutes. But I'm on the trail, got about nine miles to a designated camping area. Hopefully there's a good water source there. I may be leaving Juniper Prairie Wilderness. I just came from that way. So long, Juniper Wilderness. I gotta say, I lucked out with this weather today. It's pretty pleasant. Uh, it's very overcast now. And right around 70 degrees. So extremely comfortable. Not too hot and humid. My kind of weather. The first boardwalk that I've seen. Definitely not needed this time of year. There's what's left of the water in this low lying area. <laughs> Pretty dry. So I'm kind of upset that I haven't seen any bear or alligator on this trip. I was really counting on seeing those two at least and maybe even a boar. Nothing. I saw some turkeys during my shuttle on the Suwannee River section and six deer. Three deer two different times. That's it. And of course squirrels, but only at the campground. Look at all this ugly scrub ground. Just looks like a wasteland out here. I just read a comment on Gut Hook a little bit ago that said this is the area, the area that I'm coming into right now is the largest scrubland area in the world. Wouldn't surprise me. It's desolate and hideous looking if you ask me, but it's, you know, it's different. So it's kind of cool in its own way. we got a great big pond coming up, Farles Lake. That's gonna be our water source here in a couple miles. Just look at this. I think this might be the remnants of a big fire that happened. Someone was telling me about a fire that roared through here about 15 years ago. Getting our first views of Ocala Pond. We're gonna be walking around this pond for a while. And then we will come up to Farles Lake after that. And there are three camping options on Gut Hook along the way. And I'm gonna take the one that's three miles away from here. 
got a really nice view of Ocala Pond now. It's hard to believe it can go from that ugly scrub ground to this beauty that quickly. I've been walking through this type of environment for quite a while around Ocala Pond, all around over in there. Just a lot of grass. And I imagine this is mostly underwater after a lot of flooding. Oh, we got some herons over here. I mean, I see, well, maybe those aren't herons. I can't tell. They're probably pissed off at me right now. <laughs> These birds aren't very happy. <laughs> I don't know if they're going to fly away or just make their weird noises at me. Loud. All right, I'll leave you alone. Go back to pecking in the mud. They're over here pecking away in this soupy, swampy mud. Just came across this beautiful little pond. There's actually a pair of them. There's another one coming up up there, I believe. But that looks like a legit pond and not just a little sinkhole type swamp. But Gut Hook said it does dry up at times. But that looks like a great water source. I wonder if there's any gators in there. And just up ahead, I can see the beginning of Farles Lake. Right there. Farles Lake. And it was a decent water source right down there. I just cambled up with about four liters. So I am ready for my dry camp. I have arrived at camp. It's nothing special. It's actually five feet off the trail. But uh, if I keep going, um, there's no other signs of campsites, at least according to Gut Hook. So I think I'm gonna take this spot right here. There's plenty of firewood. I'll show you what it looks like. It's, it's nothing great. Trail, fire pit, and the tent will go right there. I got tons of firewood. There's deadfall everywhere. So I'll be able to have a nice fire. But yeah, this is the trail. It's right on it. Well, we got an ATV trailhead up ahead, like a quarter mile away. And it's only a day use area. No camping's allowed, so I might as well not waste my time walking over there. We do have a pretty nice view, I guess. If there was a, a sun out, we'd have a nice sunset in the west right there. I think this is gonna have to be home for tonight. Let's get set up. All right, I decided to walk on down towards this uh, Farrell's ATV trailhead, the day use area, just to make sure there's nothing else better between where I dropped my pack and this uh, day use area. If not, we'll just head on back and get set up. This is tempting. I got a little fire pit right here and a picnic table right there. But we're near an Air Force base. Probably got the list of that no matter where I go. I did read about that from Good Hooks. Up ahead here, there's more picnic tables. Let's go check them out. I would say this place is not being maintained. I mean, look at that. I think this place might be closed down. There's the bathrooms. We'll go see if those are open. So it is, in fact, just a day use area. And you can't even get water here. I did read about this on Gut Hook too. Someone stole the handle, so there's no way to pump water. This is just a run-down, crappy place. I mean, there's all these picnic tables scattered about. Close the camping. I bet these bathrooms are just destroyed. You gotta be kidding me. And they want me to pay $5 to use this place for the day? To park here? And this is what I get? Well, after seeing that dump back there at Farrell's Prairie, I'm going back to where I dropped my pack. Far better, better in every way. A good view, tons of firewood, flat place for my tent. Yeah, what more could you want? I'd be afraid to camp back there for two reasons. One, a ranger 
or park service or whoever maintains this would come and kick me out or find me and two it is a nasty day use area there was lots of evidence of atvs um, if it was the weekend i imagine that would be busy up there but when you're in a place like that next to a road with easy access you never know who's going to show up in the middle of the night so back to my original spot it is oh there it is all set up for tonight time to get a fire going so one thing i really like about peak refuel meals they don't take a lot of water so i'm getting ready to try the beef stroganoff tonight and on the back when i read the directions it says carefully add three-fourths of a cup of boiling water i mean if this was a mountain house meal or any other like a packet gourmet it'd probably be one and a half to two cups of boiling water so that's great when you're on a backpacking trip and especially when water is hard to come by all right i don't talk about dehydrated meals that often but i am telling you i think this is the best beef stroganoff i've ever eaten in my life better than homemade better than mom's wife's mother-in-law's i'm sorry to say it but man peak refuel has got it going on when it comes to beef stroganoff oh my gosh it's so good it's just about 5 30 and ready to call it a day i don't even have to gather firewood because there's deadfall everywhere around me so i literally walk 15 or 20 feet and pick up handfuls and drag it right back and throw it in the fire the pine's struggling just a little bit i think it's a little on the wet side i gotta say that beef stroganoff man it was so good i could eat a whole nother package of it and that one package was 800 810 calories man so good if you want to eat like a king in a backcountry, try Peak Refuel Beef Stroganoff. I'm down to my final hour of daylight for night five on the Florida Trail. It has been an awesome trail. I've really enjoyed myself out here, but I'm ready to get back and finish this hike. My feet are a little sore today. I'm at mile 91 of the 100 miles, so tomorrow morning I just have nine miles back to my car at Alexander Springs. And the rest of this evening, I think I'm just going to hang out around the fire and relax and rest and try to cool off um, it's like mid 60s it's kind of muggy and it's not going to cool off much tonight but that is all that is going on here at camp i will see everybody in the morning nothing better than putting on a fresh pair of unused socks for my final day on the florida trail as well as a fresh shirt Representing the River Kings today. Good Tuesday morning. My final day on the Florida Trail. And as you can see all around me, it is cloudy, overcast, a little misty, and a few spider webs strung across the trail here and there. Which, if you follow me, you know I hate spider webs, but it's not that bad. I had a great night last night, probably the best night of the trip. It was just perfect conditions. It was a little muggy, but um, having that campfire and that good freeze-dried peak refuel meal just made my night. The only issue last night was the air pad. My uh, tensor, my Nemo tensor pad has sprung another leak. It's just a pinhole leak, and I had to fill it up probably five times overnight. And it wasn't bad if I stayed on my back. But as soon as I went on my side, you know, my hip would dig into the ground. I could feel the cold. Not that it was cold, but it was uncomfortable. So that's the one drawback or downside to that Nemo. This is going to be the fourth hole I've patched in it. And I'm gentle. I, do not, I am not rough with my air pads. I don't understand how it's had four leaks and probably, what, 25 nights of using it? That's terrible. And they're a pain in the butt to find. you got to fill your bathtub up. And these leaks are so small that you have to hold it submerged and get all the air bubble pockets off the material, and then you can finally find the hole. Oh well, um, got about seven miles back to my truck. Got on the trail about 7 a.m. Got to get home to my responsibilities, and I'm looking forward to seeing my wife and sleeping in my comfortable bed.
About a month ago, before I hit the Florida Trail, I released a video about my Ultra Olympus 4s, and I raved about them, how comfortable they are. But uh, for some reason on this trip, when I was getting close to mile 20 each day, my feet were really, really sore, especially the last two days. And I, I feel like I'm in just as good as shape as I was during my FKT, so I don't think it's that. Uh, maybe, maybe it was the weight of my pack. It was a little heavier this time. It was probably pushing 20 pounds. And maybe the shoes are just getting worn out. And time for a new pair. Well, I just hit the turnoff to Alexander Springs. A half mile to go to my car and cleanliness. I'm looking forward to it. Now, those of you who know the Ocala National Forest section well, there is the Clearwater Lake sign another 10 miles south. So if I was gonna completely through hike the Ocala section, I'd have another 10 miles. But uh, I decided to call it quits here so I can enjoy the springs and the showers. And I know that the final 10 miles, there's nothing spectacular, nothing much different than what I've already seen. So I decided to skip that section. Let's go check out the springs. Well, folks, I think I'm gonna wrap up this video right here. I am moments away from stepping off the Florida Trail and ending my 100 mile trek on the Florida Trail here at Alexander Springs. Um, it is an awesome trail. I highly recommend it, especially if you don't like hiking in the snow and ice during the winter months. The Florida Trail is a great place to come and continue backpacking in the winter. Whether you stumbled across my videos while doing research on the Florida Trail, or if you are a loyal supporter of my channel and watch all my videos, I appreciate you all. And if you are wondering which section I liked best, I have to give a nod to the Suwannee River section. That was fabulous. So if you're unable to do both sections and wanting to hike on the Florida Trail during the winter time to avoid all the snow and ice and cold in the north, I would highly recommend the Suwannee River section. Don't get me wrong, I really enjoyed the Ocala National Forest as well. But if I had to choose one, I would go with Suwannee River. So if you haven't seen that video and are interested in what that section looks like, I will drop a link down in the description box as well as at the end of this video. Well, I have a ribeye steak with my name on it somewhere between here and Jacksonville Airport. So I'm gonna hop in my car and make my way to the airport and prepare for the flight home to cold, frigid, snowy, icy Ohio. Thank you so much for coming along on my 100 mile journey on the Florida Trail. And until next time, I'm Jason Wish, wishing you a great time on your next adventure.